global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Global Happiness Today YouTube channel. Still on the issue of uh, Southeasterners living in Lagos. Of course, many Nigerians have reacted to the issue of demolition of some of their shops uh, cut across in Lagos, especially international markets. Of course, there was a call that was made by one of the sitting governors. I'm talking about Professor Charles Soludo, who many Nigerians believe that his statement and response uh, is not in sync with his position and character. Uh, but we're going to look at what he said, uh, the implications to both Ndibos living in Lagos and the traders who they have been advised to do what he said as against the reality on ground. Then probably with that, they can make their you know choice or position on this. Before going to the newspaper, can I subscribe to our channel? But since Governor Soludo made the call for Anambra traders in Lagos to relocate and bring home their businesses to their homeland, they have been struggling. A lot of people have been struggling to process such a call. Coming from a professor of economics and a global citizen makes it more difficult. Now, let's assume that um, these Anambra traders respond to the call of political leader and representative who is considered to be the governor of Anambra state. The traders would disperse throughout Anambra state. This does not imply that Lagos market will close. It does not imply that Lagos market will close. Never. The traders from the southeast and other parts of Nigeria will fill the void left by these traders and carry on with their enterprise because life abhors vacuums. Consider Chukuma. Consider Chukuma and Sons, motor spare parts, for instance, which is well known in Lagos motor spare parts market, packing up to return home to Anambra to re establish itself due to a disagreement with his landlord. Extend this to all his Anambra coal traders who left home to compete with the business needs business needs of a mega city like Lagos, or will relocate their stores back home mainly to serve Professor Charles Solido CFR's ego score. With such an exit and move shut down the Lagos spare parts or other businesses controlled by Anambra traders. This isn't about the security security worry that has dominated this space since the governor's rash call, but rather the economic sense that such a call makes for the governor. Obviously, the Lagos state market will continue to flourish and benefit those who are prepared, simply because Lagos has reached a level that neither envy nor prejudice can demolish. Lagos flourishes in business due to its size and strategic location in the country today. The average Anambra man or even woman, like other ethnic groups in Lagos, benefit from the large markets and demands that Lagos provides. Asking them to relocate home would not shut down Lagos State, which is destined to grow even more. Rather, remittance from Lagos to Anambra will suffer because the market does not exist Exist, exit in Anambra State as it does in Lagos. No one will travel to your hideout in search of you. Kindly perish the thought that cons customers would come to Anambra to buy from Anambra traders if they needed the commodity. Those who are available will take over their demands, while those who have gone home will likely lose their customer base. Those Thinking over the statement and calling for relocation clearly do not grasp Governor Chukuma Solido's gaffe. It is fine to encourage investors to consider your state as any investment destination for a variety of reasons. Anyone would do so. However, capitalizing on the reported spat between some evil traders and their hosts to now ask your brothers and sisters to return home and relocate their business so you can collect more taxes even when the market is not available, it's completely absurd. I might be wrong though, but perhaps Charles Soludo, the much talked about economic titan, 
made a different call from my understanding and illust illustration, which I would ask him to portray further to rank like us would understand better. If not, then we voted a governor who should look into the economic situation. Anyone at this stage and, and age and time still asking Igbo to return home is simply an enemy within who doesn't des desire the progress of the people of Southeast and their hometown. We must purge ourselves of whatever left of the 1967 civil saga and bury this victimhood mentality so we can tap into the opportunities for which nature has availed us as indigenous people in present day Nigeria. I will not follow the call by Dim Odime Gojuku in the 1960s. A lot has changed since then, and lessons have been learned, which Dim confessed to before his transition to the great beyond. The first call was a mistake, and another will be a disaster. We must seek working political solutions to our present day challenges, if any. If Charles Oludo had traveled to Lagos State, with other Southeast governors to meet with their counterparts at Alausa Government House to discuss the challenges being faced by Igbo traders in the state. Positives, positives would, be, would have been garnered and long-term solutions to the differences would have been discussed and implemented. But instead, he went to Oka through Umweri Airport only to call a town hall meeting for number traders to boycott Lagos and relocate their businesses home as that would be the only way to resolve the differences. They are, they are everywhere distorting the Akuro Uno, Uno philosophy, which loses translations to remittance back home rather than business relocation to a hideout where no one will see them for patronage and consumption. They were made rich by the markets in Lagos, not the other way around, and you are asking them to relocate back home? I have always had the view that Igbos who are sojourners and traditional traders by nature benefit more from Nigerians' unity and complexity. Okay, but our ability to live and do business anywhere gives us this unrestricted access to the vast market size of the nation. And anyone urging us to return home is simply a household enemy. Instead of making ridiculous ego calls, our governors should be talking to their counterparts across the whole state about our protection and equal treatment, which is often the issue. Okay, but now, this is well said if you ask me. I, I do not think it's off point. Let's tell ourselves the truth. If for any reason, this issue of home call, anybody who goes home, even the Yoruba or the Southwesterners will automatically open that shop. What does it take to sell? In as much as they sell, uh, maybe today they, they sell a uh, shock absorber, and you come say, please, do you have spanner, which spanner? I know yet. They'll go to one and go add with spanner to it. It doesn't take, it doesn't take rocket science, really, to learn trading. Just look at the market size and the popular demand. It's true. Everyone benefits from that large size of Lagos. So it's a win-win situation. It's not actually a, a, a parasitic relationship. I think it's a symbiosis situation where you take some, I also take some. That's a good wrap it up. What's your take? Do you agree with uh, what he said about him calling back home? Because even if you go back home, do you have that market base, market size, just as Lagos did have, where everyone is as a nerve center? Without, um, without prejudice, let's look at this objectively. Do you think they should go back home or do you think they should remain and, you know, do be nice?